Hey everyone, Chris Sawyer here. The Varietal Show is back. We are here at Omarosa. And, uh, you know, I, this is Santa Barbara County, you guys, and we are in Santa Rita Hills. Santa Rita Hills is a very special place to me. I had a godfather that lived here. Um, and when I think about Pinot Noir and California history of Pinot Noir, I think about Sanford and Benedict, one of the great vineyards that was developed here and it was here in Santa Barbara County and it was here in the Santa Rita Hills before it was even in Appalachian, way before it was in Appalachian. And that's why I'm here with Richard Sanford himself. One of my great friends and you know, Richard and I were talking before, I really have known you for a long time. Yes. It's been a great experience of me getting to know Pinot Noir through Richard, you know, since the mid nineties. I mean, that's a long time. Things have changed, haven't they, Richard? They have. <laughs> I'm in my 50th vintage here. He's, this is 50th vintage, everyone. Yeah. Once again, Omarosa. But we're going to taste wines later, um, you know, at the, at the tasting room, which is downtown in, in, in Solvang. Solvang. Right? In mm -hmm. Solvang. So if you guys ever saw a movie called, um, a little bit called Sideways, anyone out there hear about that? <laughs> Richard was way bigger back then already. You know, and actually, we were just talking about the impact of that movie and how it brought a lot of attention to this area. But getting attention to Pinot Noir when you started was the hard part. Pinot Noir was not a grape that anyone knew anything about, really, back then. What was it like for you? You came here, you left the Navy, you'd had an amazing experience with Volnay, uh, which is one of the great regions of of Burgundy, and you'd had a wine on one of the ships with one of your friends that really kind of blew you away. And you really wanted to, you got out of the Vietnam War, you came, what brought you here? Why here? Well, Chris, a long story, but uh, the short version is that coming out of the Vietnam War and coming out of the Navy, I returned in 1968 to a tumultuous time. Yeah. And shows that, uh, frankly, um, I needed to do something in nature. Yep. Uh, nothing else was really feeling great for me. And I thought uh, I had had this beautiful Volnay wine. I didn't, it wasn't an aha moment yeah. necessarily, yeah. but uh, I decided that I wanted to uh, be a farmer. Be a farmer. And grow grapes. And uh, I thought, you know, why not farm something that was uh, not perishable? Yep and got better with age and so i began to study about wine i thought uh, gosh i could go and get a degree yep. from davis but uh, i had finished uh, studying geography yeah. geography at berkeley yeah and decided well do i do uh, four years of of study before planting a vineyard and i figured uh, i went to davis and bought all the books i could find about <laughs> about wine growing and decided maybe I could do this myself. Yeah. And so at that particular time, it was a really exciting, yeah. it was in the uh, uh, late 60s, early 70s. Yeah. And I began to research where good grapes would grow. Yeah. And, uh, and with my background in geography, uh, yeah. learned about the uh, transverse mountain range here in Santa Barbara yeah. area. Yeah. And, uh, Learned that uh, the onshore winds uh, blowing into the valley moderated the climate. So yep. it was about a degree a mile yeah. as you went east or west. Yeah, we got to look. I mean, this is a great house behind us. That we're, it's kind of why we wanted to kind of film this here. Is um, it's just a you know this is early nineteen uh, hundreds right here and just really what it is. Uh, nineteen ten I think was when it was exactly. built. Exactly. Um, but one of the things inside there is this amazing map. And I took a picture of this map, and you're so fascinated with this map. This map was from 1886 or 1889. I can't remember which one. doesn't matter. It's an old map. But the thing is how it really outlaid really what the topography is here in this area was really fascinating. And it also uh, had a lot to do with the Mexican culture and how they really had established their farms here, their big ranches, the rancheros. Um, and we got big... Um, and how this all worked like that. And so um, it's just fascinating. You, and we talked about San Inez, and I you know, wrote the big piece on that for uh, Wine Business Monthly back in 2013, and next year will be the 40 year anniversary of that Appalachian. That Appalachian is very long. 
and this is the area where we're on the eastern edge of the Santa Rita Hills here, and we're also on, off of Santa Rosa Road, um, which is a little bit different than 246 and these kinds of other areas here. But we are definitely on the southern side of the, the Appalachian. It's just fascinating how you came down here, and, and the original San Fran Benedict is how far down the road? Oh, about four miles down. About four the miles road, down. The west. So he went even further that way than we are today. Um, and you really, you found a special spot. What were some of the first signs that people, well, I know that you used to take some of the samples down to the golf courses in, in LA and, and you'd go kind of people that were very French, uh, you know, they're French files. I mean, they loved Burgundy, but yeah. you wanted to prove to them that you <clears throat> could do it here. What were some of those signs that, you, you know what, we can be successful with Pinot Noir? Well, originally, uh, I had to find... Uh, some investors to do this project because yeah. uh, you know we couldn't make wine because they weren't great so right. we had to plant a vineyard yeah and uh, so uh, I found uh, my investors actually as the um, uh, uh, in the Los Angeles Country Club right. in charge of the wine committee yeah and so uh, I made my pitch to plant a vineyard uh, along with Michael Benedict, and uh, we were successful in uh, buying some cuttings from uh, the Nielsen Vineyard yep. and putting them in the ground. Yep. And in a year, they were worth 90 cents. We bought them for 10 cents. <laughs> and uh, so off we went. And, uh, and for me, needing to be in nature yep. it was a wonderful experience to drive on the tractor and actually get the vineyard established. Yeah. And uh, once you did get it established, I mean, what was one of the first things where where the critics or, or the consumers were, what was a sign there that you really felt like, okay, wait, we're, we're moving in the right direction here. We're, you know, um, this was back in the, you know, you were really establishing something very different. And you, we were talking about this when you went to what is now one market, um, uh, and that's where, um, you know, Mrs. Goldstein was there and you, you had a thing there and there were, there were Pinot Noir producers, but your name was not known, um, yet. It was very hard to gain that early recognition. Yeah. Frankly, it was, uh, um, that very first vintage, 1976. Yeah. Um, uh, Robert Lawrence Balzer, uh, got wind of what was going on yeah. here. And he brought Leonce Picot from the Down Under restaurant oh, yeah. here. And uh, he wrote in his, uh, remember Robert Lawrence Balls had oh, yeah. a newsletter? Absolutely. And he wrote about, uh, uh, I always remember, it was uh, um, Grand Cru in a Lompoc barn. Yeah. And we had converted by then, uh, we had been growing grapes for uh, seven, six years. And the 1976 Pinot Noir yep. uh, was our first uh, commercial vintage, and um, he wrote up the, the, the wine highly. Yeah. And I was asked to come to Los Angeles to present the wines uh, in a big uh, tasting. Yeah. And uh, I'll always remember going into that room and being so intimidated. <laughs> it was at the uh, at the California Club in Los Angeles. Yeah. And. Um, uh, all these people, uh, remember the California Vintage Wine Society? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And these people were uh, in this ballroom with white tablecloths, and uh, the wine was poured. And I thought to myself, I was nervous. Yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> the, all the pomp, you know, about it, and the huff and the puff, and the smelling. And then someone said, son of a bitch. And I thought, oh my God, they don't like my wine. But I, I learned, soon learned it was a term of endearment yes. because this was Hernando Courtright who owned the Beverly Hills Hotel and had said, uh, finally, yeah. uh, Burgundy in he, California. That was his expression. That is amazing and, accomplishment uh, there. And, and so... That, Son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> there was that amazing moment. And from that point on, yeah. it was really recognized. But it took time. It did take because time. Because people thought um, Santa Barbara is too far south. Yeah. You know, that's sunny beach yeah. weather. Yeah. 
And we have this beautiful Mediterranean climate, yeah. but it's the transverse mountain range that yeah. really... Transverse uh, meaning that we are going really west to, to east here. So we're, we're not... We're not going this way. We're going this way. Well, it's hard to know this way and this way. Yeah. And I was telling Chris. That's west from here, that, you guys. <laughs> uh, I was telling Chris, it's hard when I've been selling wine on the East Coast to explain to people that the coast of uh, California at this point is east and west. Yeah. When you're driving from Los Angeles to Santa Barbara, you're driving west rather than north. And so in this east-west mountain range, we're open to the westerly winds. The winds blowing into the valley moderate the climate. So right. we have some very cool climate areas here. You do. In fact, we now have five different uh, distinct appellations. Each one, as you know, yes. and you actually yep. helped name the, yeah. the Ballard Hills. I yes, understand. absolutely. But um, People have recognized the distinctiveness of the different climates for different varieties. Right, exactly.